All right, so we're gonna do a small recap on the actual configuration that I did for Unraid and as well as Windows. There's just two, a couple of things that need to be changed in order to achieve 900 megabytes per second. Uh, but before we do that, we have to talk about what's changed. Uh, so since I've done that video, there's actually been a lot of revisions done to Unraid itself. Uh, as you may recall from the previous video, as you can see here or here or somewhere on the screen, um, I did have problems with my Plex Docker where I couldn't access the web UI. That problem still uh, hasn't been fixed. I don't know why I can't access it, but I ended up having to create a, uh, a Ubuntu server VM that has Plex installed just so I can have Plex again. And uh, so what ended up happening is I upgraded, I did a clean install of Unraid 6.6 to try and fix that issue. Uh, that didn't work, so then I updated 6.6.1, 6.6.1, yeah, that sounds right. Uh, and then still had the problems, I don't know, couldn't figure it out, Plex UI doesn't work locally, no matter what I tried, I tried a billion different things I feel like. Uh, so I just said, screw it, virtual machine, virtual machine works perfectly fine, booyah. Uh, and also, one other thing that has changed is I'm down to uh, a single NVMe disk now for my cache. So there's no longer a RAID 1 and two NVMe Toshiba drives. There's only one. I suspect that one of the drives is going bad or has gone bad, one of the two. Um, it's giving me a lot of errors. Uh, so we've removed that. Uh, luckily that happened about the same time I was gonna perform a clean install. So we're only on one disk. Uh, that shouldn't change our performance. I've been creating you know, the previous video and other videos and I've been able to hit 900 megabytes per second, uh, really depending on the file size. Uh, so now let's go ahead and jump in and talk about what the network actually looks like um, to help explain the overview of how things go. So ultimately what needs to happen with the network is the truncator has to have access to the internet as well as the Unraid server itself. So looking at this at a conceptual level, um, the internet comes in, goes to the modem, goes to the router and then to the switch and from the switch to the Unraid server. And on the Unraid server, the onboard NIC and the Intel X540 are bridged together and a CAT6 cable goes from the Intel NIC to the truncator. Uh, and that is how the truncator gets internet as well as direct access to the Unraid storage server itself. After the software and after the hardware changes, we didn't have to make any changes to our network. So we still have all of our ethernet ports between the onboard NIC and the Intel X540 T2 NIC in a bridged connection. So these are all now members of BR0. And another important setting that we changed was setting the MTU size to 9000. So this is particularly important if you want to achieve 900 megabits megabytes per second. Um, I'm sure you could probably get really high speeds if you change to something else, but in our case, for 10 gig networking, we are going to want to have the MTU set to 9000. Uh, furthermore, you can see that I do have a custom um, setup for my NICs, or my bridge, actually. Uh, so, of course, I signed a static IP address uh, to the server itself. I'm pointing it to the default gateway which is our router in this case. And uh, the DNS happens to also share the same IP address and then two backup DNSs. These two aren't necessary. Uh, this one probably isn't, but it's good to have uh, in this particular case. So as long as you make those few changes, uh, you should be good to go. Okay, so on the Windows side of the house, we only really adjusted a couple things here as well. And um, I guess the two biggest changes Oh, that's sorry, that's not right. The two biggest changes I made uh, since all of the software issues and hardware issues is I went ahead and signed myself an actual IP address uh, versus using DHCP. For whatever reason, uh, this seems to work best uh, in my situation now. I don't know what happened, but I think after the 6.6.1 update, um, something weird happened that I can't explain but I have to have this information manually plugged in or I do not get access at all to the internet. Uh, so 
Uh, I've assigned an IP address of my choice. This is the subnet. And the default gateway is actually the server this time uh, because of the bridge we have set up. And then the DNS server is again, uh, my router. Uh, so those, that's pretty important here. Um, there's not really much else to see. Uh, so the next biggest change is here on the actual IPv4. Um, so what we need to do is go to the advanced tab and scroll down for, uh, where is Jumbo? There we go, Jumbo packets. So the only options I have here, um, as you can see, are these different bytes. Now the one that we particularly want is 9,014 bytes. So I have that set, and that is the only other thing I changed in here. So I've seen some people say that you can change the flow control, um, something about uh, the offload V2. Uh, that's enabled for me by default. This is enabled by default. Um, I've seen people uh, talk about receive buffers. Uh, this was a default value for me. I didn't change anything else uh, in here at all. Like everything is totally default. The only thing that I had to actually set was this jumbo packet uh, to 94 or 9014 bytes. Uh, so that's pretty critical. Okay, so I felt obligated to actually show you guys a one gigabyte per second transfer speed uh, because I'm doing video, might as well show it, right? So here on the left, we have uh, my actual file system on the truncator and on the right is the file system for the Unraid server. And we're just gonna transfer it over this ISO and there you go, one gigabyte per second. And that was a fairly small um, image and that was only 4.3 gigabytes. Um, so we're going to try, try a video that is uh, 11 gigabytes or approximately 11 gigabytes in file size and we're going to transfer that over into the same folder and see what we get and there you go one gigabyte per second easy peasy all right milestones of love or anyone else who thought the previous video was a bit ambiguous I hope there is plenty of information in this video to kind of show you exactly how the Unraid server and Windows are set up to work together uh, to get to 10 gigabit speeds. Uh, if not, just drop some questions below in the comments and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And I just want to thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.